Ladies and gentlemen, before we get to Richard Grinnell, the acting director of national intelligence, and the fact that for some reason he's not treated in the same way as James Clapper. Gee, I wonder why. This is a great Washington Examiner article. Washington Examiner, The Federalist, these are great, great publications. And Bob Woodward, President Obama's officials facing possible criminal charges for unmasking scheme. Daniel Chayton, great journalist. Mar uh, Mark, this is March 22nd, 2017. So they revere, people revere Bob, Bob Woodward. By the way, his um, Woodward and Bernstein, the reason they were able to break Watergate is because of an FBI official. Um, we'll get to the, you know the, the name, but YouTube policies, I'm not going to even get to the name, but here, the Washington Post's Bob Woodward warned on Wednesday that there are people from President Obama's administration who could be facing charges for unmasking the names of Trump transition team members from surveillance of foreign of officials. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Representative Devin Nunes said earlier that he had briefed Trump on new information unrelated to an investigation into Russian activities that suggested that several members of Trump's transition team, and perhaps President Trump himself, had their identities unmasked after their communications were intercepted by U.S. intelligence officials. The revelation is notable because identities of Americans are generally supposed to remain unmasked. Oh, sorry. <laughs> are generally supposed to re remain masked if American communications are swept up during surveillance of foreign individuals. During an interview on Fox News, Woodward said that if information about the unmasking is true, it's a gross violation. He said it isn't Trump's assertion without proof that it is... He said it isn't that his, that his predecessor, predecessor wiretapped Trump Tower... Uh, okay, here, we know that Trump was right. And then they, they split hairs. It wasn't a wiretap. It was just surveillance. But rather that intelligence officials named the Americans being discussed in intercept, intercepted communication. Quote, you can learn all, all kinds of things from diplomats gossiping. Because that's what occurs. Under the rules, they are pretty strict. It's called minimization. You don't name an American person who is being discussed, Woodward said. By the way, this evening, bizarro world good money, you have to watch... It's, it's the premiere of segment number six, I believe. Subscribe right now to Bizarro World Goodman. We're, I think we're almost, or we just hit 4,000 subs. It's a comedy channel, and it is me as the personification, the embodiment of everyone who has serious, serious derangement issues uh, about President Trump. The person in your life that tries to judge and demean you uh, and pretends they're morally superior over you because you're voting for a really wonderful president and President Trump. Um, a person who goes up against intelligence officials that are corrupt, a person that, that brings home Americans from, Amer uh, from eventually from America's longest running military conflict. The first president ever to step foot in North Korea and begin detente between North and South Korea, and President Moon Jae-in of South Korea stated that, South Korea stated that Trump deserved the Nobel Peace Prize. And because of President Trump and Moon Jae-in, um, we have the beginning of detente, but the president of South Korea stated that he envisions a joint Olympic team between North and South uh, Korean athletes. This was never possible. In my view, the, the most important ally that we have on the planet is South Korea for many reasons, especially because from a geopolitical sense. I believe the two most important, number one is, is South Korea, and I, I think the second most important is Israel. Um, but South Korea and Israel are two of our most important allies, especially because of, geopol uh, ge for, for, because of geopolitical considerations. But President Trump, in addition to having a record economy, um, he's now, check my segment prior to this one, Gallup, he, he's reached his highest point in, in Gallup approval and his highest point among independents, the highest point among any vote, uh, any um, politician. 
in this election. But here, he noted that there are about 20 people in the intelligence community who, for intelligence reasons, can order this minimization to be removed. But the idea that there was intelligence value here is really thin. It, it, it's, again, down the middle. It's not what Trump said, but this could be uh, criminal on the part of people who decided, oh, let's see these people's names. Susan Rice and others, Samantha Power, and others stated, well, no, we, we, didn't, we didn't unmask anybody. And then they said, oh, well, of course, we, you know, we, we did unmask people. Now we have Catherine Herridge. More detail, Richard Grinnell memo, se uh, senior administration official says, goal to set uniform standard across 17 agencies for identifying or unmasking U.S. person information, eliminating varying standards to protect privacy, reflects ongoing concern handling U.S. person info last election cycle. Richard Grinnell, the acting U.S. U acting director of national intelligence, ordered 17 agencies to immediately review whether their handling, sharing information that identifies U.S. persons are in compliance with strict privacy policies and procedures, according to a memo exclusively reviewed by CBS News. Now, Richard Grinnell is doing this in large part because um, John Durham and William Barr have conducted a broad, wide-ranging, expansive investigation that continues to expand. You know, Trey Gowdy is an interesting gentleman. The other day he said, gosh, I don't see, um, I don't see uh, charges being, uh, being filed ever uh, leveled against Comey or Strzok or McCabe or Clapper or Brennan. And the, in, the mentality here is the following. So we know that un names were unmasked, and that's against the law. Even Bob Woodward said so. We know that people were set up and framed. We know that uh, information was given to FISA courts that was falsified. Not, it weren't just accidents. 17 inaccuracies within applications. Numerous times, they, it, it is against the law to, to fabricate evidence. This is what took place. They used a dossier that was purchased by Hillary Clinton. They would never allow, you think any of these pundits who revere the, the intelligence agencies would allow any of the, pun, uh, any of, um, would allow President Trump or any Republican to buy a dossier on Hillary Clinton, who, by the way, will be the next Democratic nominee. She'll go back to back, and it'll be, um, the Democrats will lose um, once again, with Madam Secretary, I give her a 25 to 30 percent chance of winning, though. I mean, so don't. My prediction is that she will lose. If you are watching this channel, and subscribe also to H.A. Goodman's other channel. If you're watching this channel, and that, that's below as well, it has almost 15,000 subs. If you're watching this channel and um, you're asking yourself, well, um, when is it going to happen? And, and, and just please share, please share my article in the Huffington Post in 2017. Cl Hillary Clinton 2020 is a reality. Get ready for eight years of Trump. If you're on Twitter, if you're on social media or Facebook, I do not have a Twitter account. I do not have a Facebook account. If you see anybody impersonating me, contact, quit, uh, report them to Twitter or Facebook. But Share. If you're still on social media, I suggest you just delete the pages like I did. But if you're still on, share my article in the Huffington Post. Clinton 2020 is a reality. Get ready for eight years of Trump. Please. That was written in February of 2017. Please go ahead if you want to, if you if you still continue to be on, on Twitter or Facebook, share those uh, that article. And the reason is because every day that gets closer to August 12th, 13th, I believe that it was, no, sorry, August, uh, yes, August, let's see, the Democratic Convention is the um, is on the date of the 19th Amendment's ratification. So it is going to be Clinton's second time, August 17th, August 18th, 17th to 20, August 18th is when... The, is a centennial of the 19th Amendment. Biden is done. We know this. Now, what is the relevance of Clinton being the nominee again? The relevance, ladies and gentlemen, is that this was all predetermined. Democrats live in a matrix. The, the left, the Democratic Party, most progressives, liberals, even the even the anarchists and the wonderful people on the far far left who the only people who are really like honest really are the green party people i mean i i respect them but any, anyway the they're all most people on the left who despise trump almost all people who despise trump are living in a matrix 
They're living in a computer program, a computer program designed by their by a cauldron cauldron of contempt and just insidious, vile, malicious petulance. All they care about is Trump's personality. That's all they that's all they demand. When President Obama drank Flint water, he drank Flint water. They gave him a free pass. Well, you know, even even Hollywood celebrities. Oh, well, you know, uh, gosh, you know. Well, um, you know, it was just, um, you know, he tried his best. Could you imagine if Trump drank Flint water? How many scandals and controversies were just given, were just erased from history under President Obama's administration, from Standing Rock, the atrocities that took place there, to uh, Flint water, to a failed NATO intervention, um, in Libya that destroyed and, and obliterated the country. I mean, how many you get away? They get away with everything, but the normality that they they seek is actually part of their flawed, warped, circus mirror vision of who they are. All they care about is upholding this hilarious, sad, and pathetic clown-like image of them being morally superior despite presiding over rec- the record the, the the United States record in the number of de- deport, uh, deportations this is the the hypocrisy they can't get in, the, in their brains they can't get the fact that they presided over more people being deported than anyone in US history they can't get that they don't understand that they don't understand why that's even relevant because their lives revolve around just contempt and disliking Trump. So therefore, if they unmask names, if they set them up with a dossier Clinton purchased, if they were just highly to moderately confident, getting back to Trey Gowdy, you know me, I, I'm all over the place. Trey Gowdy's like, oh, well, you know, it's overzealous policing. That's really what it is. No, it's not, Congressman Gowdy. It's not overzealous policing. You, a police officer cannot fabricate evidence that is against the law. They fabricated evidence in a, in a in a in a um, in the application, not giving falsifying falsifying applications to FISA judges is against the law. It's basically you're fabricating evidence. If you do, if you withhold information. Ex- exculpatory information, or if you just withhold um, important, relevant data f- to a FISA judge and say, well, you know what, we have to start this investigation of Carter Page. You've not only broken the law, you're trying to utilize government against this state of purpose. The United States government does not exist to prevent Trump from becoming president. So it's 18 U.S. Code 371. You've conspired to defraud the United States, the people of the United States, utilizing agencies against their stated purpose, or 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 conducting when 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 they said, well, uh, there might not be a legal statute, there might not be a legal statute uh, for collusion, but there is 18 U.S. Code 371, and President Trump conspired with a whole bunch of people to defraud the people of the United States. First of all. There was no evidence that he did anything of the sort. Secondly, the only evidence they had was purchased by Clinton. Third, the U.S. intelligence agencies, their indictments of Russian intelligence officers are predicated upon high to moderate confidence reports that James Clapper wrote. So when Richard Grinnell is is finding out you know, why names were unmasked, it correlates directly to John Durham and William Barr. It wasn't overzealous policing uh, with all due respect, Congressman Gowdy, because information was fabricated and agencies were utilized for political purposes. We already know that, that Peter Strzok said we'll stop Trump. I mean, what more do we need? Do we, with, 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 with Comey and Strzok and McCabe and Clapper, they need a handwritten note saying, we are trying to sabotage Trump, signed us. With Trump, it's like a steel dossier written by somebody on in Jupiter, uh, you know, uh, and the sources were uh, somebody from a galaxy over. Okay, we've got to investigate for three years. Oops, what, a memo from Comey? Oh, well, then we have to go ahead and have a special counsel. I mean, these are memos. They're memorialized, for goodness sake. It's unbelievable. You already have legal statues that were broken. 
So you have an establishment person like uh, Trey Gowdy or, or Marco Rubio or Paul Ryan. I mean, Gowdy like, is like Lindsey Graham. You have the establishment Republicans have one foot outside and one foot inside the establishment. At the end of the day, they'll always say, well, you know, Russia really tried to hurt us. The Russians don't care. They got, what do they want, 80% more of, of U.S. uranium capacity? They, they, but Robert Mueller was the director while this whole thing was going down. There was a bribery and racketeering scandal on U.S. soil. I explained this in but her top secret emails, but her deleted emails. Well, I explained it in debunking the Trump-Russia myth. The, the, my, my books on Amazon are below. So, who was the FBI director when the uranium deal took place. Oh, that's right, Robert Mueller. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Why, do you, why would anyone assume that Bill Clinton getting a half a million dollars from a Moscow investment bank, Hillary on the board of directors, uh, I'm sorry, on, oh, that's Hunter, Hillary on the Committee on Foreign Investment, President Obama failing to veto the, um, failing to veto the deal, and, and Democrats have never explained how this benefits U.S., foreign policy or national security to allow 20% of U.S. uranium capacity to eventually be in Putin's hands. How does that help the U.S. at all? But ladies and gentlemen, be here. Bizarro World Goodman, about 7.38 p.m. tonight. I'll have segment number six. Um, it's going down, people. Eventually, you'll see indictments almost certainly after the election after the election, because Democrats would say, oh my God, he's an authoritarian now. They're reversing the legacy, the absurd legacy of Trump Russia. And they're doing it one step at a time. Hillary Clinton is going to be the nominee. I am the only person, I am the only person on planet Earth that said this since 2017, ladies and gentlemen. So when, when you hear people say, well, I always knew, I'm not talking about my viewers, I'm talking about people, me, pundits, media personalities, whatever. If they say, oh, well, I always knew it, no, 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 no. I was the only person for a long time. And even still, throughout the past year and a half, people, oh, yeah, she's not running. She's not running. Uh, dude, dude. Dude, H.A. Batman, she's not running. And then finally, they're like, oh my God, oh my God. I'm like, yeah, she's back. I told you. Um, share my Huffington Post article, Clinton 2020 is a reality. Hillary Clinton 2020 is a reality. Get ready for eight years of Trump. Share that article, please, everywhere if you're on social media. Uh, the article's below in the pinned comment and description. Thank you so very, very much, everyone. If you want to support my voice long term, my Patreon link is below. Your support is greatly appreciated. It's below in the pinned comment and description. And subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to H.A. Goodman's other channel. You get an even wackier version of me. And Bizarro World Goodman, my cousin who's out of his mind. Um... That's my comedy and satire channel. Give me your thoughts. But I have wig, hat. It's right below. Go ahead and enjoy. Thank you so very, very much.